Mr. Sankster, I believe. How long have you been in Cruden Bay, Alan? Oh, for about uh, 45 years. And what have you been up to in Cruden Bay for the last 45 years? Um, well, originally, uh, when I came here, I was uh, working offshore. Um, but uh, form formally to that, uh, I was with uh, British Railways uh, in the last decade of, uh, of steam. Um, my uh, ancestors, many of them were Great North of Scotland Railway station masters. And um, I was brought up with stories of the railway as a child, etc. Um, my great grandfather's uncle was station master at Logie Riv. And uh, when I was a child, um, I used to spend weekends uh, at the station, uh, which uh, I greatly enjoyed. And uh, being interested in railways, it's something that's in the, it's in the blood. Alan, you've documented a lot of this, haven't you? Uh, yes, uh, I'm a member of the Great North of Scotland Railway Association, um, which records the history of the Great North Railway Company, uh, which was the company that uh, served uh, North East Scotland. Um, I'm also a trustee of uh, Maud Railway Museum, where we have a, a museum in the old station building uh, and some rolling stock, and we're looking to develop that uh, further. I think that's what it's just done. That's the same one. That's it. What did it say? Right, okay, so you're from Hatton. You're from Hatton. Yes, he was a farmer at Stony Hill. You were a farmer at Stony Hill? Stony yes. Hill, yes. Sir. So you're retired now? Far back to Stony Hill. So, so Stony Hill, he, he was born Born and bred. He was 94. You're 94? 10th of July, 1926. My goodness, so you've got a keen interest in four the... Minutes, four, four minutes to midnight on a Saturday night. I was on the display here in the year. And then it won probably three, four times, and there's hundreds of people come. And they're all interested in that history. Perfect. Okay. So, where, 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 it is a hell of a lot of work. Thank you. Um, where do you live now? I live in Hatton in the meantime, but I bought a house in Udea. So I'm going back to Udea because it's nearer the cemetery. My husband was a collector. A collector of history. Just everything he presents. So, one of the founder members, of the early members of the Family History Society in Aberdeen. Aberdeen. And that was your husband, your late husband? Yes. Hi, right, from a youngster who's come here today, why do you think that our history is important? Well, because it shows us um, what um, can happen in the past and what um, can I wars, kind of stuff that's happened and stuff like that, um, what we did and stuff and what things look like, uh, like the hotel uh, here and um, the golf course and um, what people did at the beach and stuff like that. Like, it just shows you what they did and where, what they did and stuff like that. Why do you think it's important for the future? Uh, it's important for the future uh, because if there wasn't a history, I wouldn't be in a future. So we kind of need a history and future. And if in the future they look back and say, oh, um, that's cool that they kind of did and stuff like that. So. Right. Mr. Clark? Butcher? You will always be the butcher, you know. Right, yeah. Prudent Bay? Yes, uh huh. How are you? Are you enjoying this um, <coughs> display of history? Yes, it's very good. Yeah, very interesting. Quite a few things I haven't seen before. This is like a new cottage on the golf course. It couldn't be. 1939. 1939. What's your 
biggest memories of being a caddy at the golf course could be? Oh, well, it's uh, uh, the caddy master being the uh, Willie Park for the bowlers. Bowlers above him. And, uh, he was a very strict caddy master. What was that there? Cost of a game of golf in 1939 was two and six. A shilling to the club, a shilling to the caddy, six months to the caddy master. Alive. <laughs> oh, I think you really don't. Oh, I think this is priceless too. You get some good news to do it. Look at that. Elizabeth from Porchetto. I feel like uh, recording history is important because people in, or young people nowadays, they don't seem to care as much. So I feel like if we didn't record it, then it would just become forgotten in the end. So. That's my view on it anyway. I was born in Ellen and brought up in uh, the Bullers of Buchan with the family. My name is Derek Duffy, by the way. And uh, the, we moved, we lived in the Bullers for about nine years, moved to Cruden Bay, stayed, stayed here for about a year. This is uh, 1950. So the hotel was still here at that time. and. Uh, Unfortunately, we had to move on after a year or so to Aberdeen because my dad had come back from the war wounded and uh, he had to find a job, finally found a job in Aberdeen, so we had to move out of the area. It's unfortunate, but that's what happened. Uh, but my mother and her two of her sisters actually worked in the, the hotel laundry during the 1930s. And uh, they they stayed at uh, St. James's Church, the... the uh, Croft beside St James's Church, where my grandfather was a beadle, and uh, they they worked in the hotel for a number of years. Story has it that my aunt Rose, who lived in Serrell Street here, eventually uh, was the manageress of the a part of the laundry or something. And uh, the, my my mum was the biggest, the greatest memory she had was uh, meeting uh, Stuart Granger, the actor. Uh, during the thirties, and uh, he obviously made a great impression because uh, she she always spoke about him. She met many other famous people in the course of her work, but uh, Stuart Granger seems to have stuck in her memory. Uh, they weren't paid a great deal. It was, I think, it was uh, mostly pin money, etc. They made a lot of tips, etc. Even in the laundry, and uh, they uh, they enjoyed their time there. Um, unfortunately, they're all gone now. Uh, my last aunt. Uh, Rosie, who was the supposed manageress, uh, she died about seven, eight years ago. My mum unfortunately died during the uh, 60s. Uh, that's as far as I can remember, but I've still got relations. We, we keep coming back here because we love Cruden Bay and uh, they, we've got relations still in the village and still round about the village uh, to this day. Well, you uh, know, you know, mm -hmm. although your loved ones aren't here any longer. Mm -hmm. You know what? You have just spoken on their behalf. Oh, that's, that's excellent. I, I, you know, history is uh, something I like. Uh, you know, I, I'm interested in. My family are interested in it. We even take our grandson around uh, showing him all the places we lived and telling the stories of how we uh, got on in, in the area. And uh, it's something we enjoy because Without history, there's no present. You know, you, you can't understand the present until you, you know what your history is. Uh, very, very important. And the, the, what we are doing now, I hope our children and grandchildren will remember that too and keep the, the interest in our past going. Yeah. I, my mother said that uh, she remembered that the uh, staff in the hotel were very... Uh, Mixed, they came from all over Scotland, as far as the Northern Islands, uh, the Northern Isles down to uh, the Central Belt, Western Isles. Most of them stayed uh, in the hotel, and uh, 
obviously lots, uh, lots of uh, local people were employed also. Uh, and she remembers meeting many, many famous people. Uh, Lord Boothby, in actual fact, who got my dad the, the job in Aberdeen eventually after the war. And uh, the, the, oh, others, Lord Lieber and all these people. Very, very cosmopolitan people came here, but the staff also were cosmopolitan because they came from all over the country. Um, you know what? What a very good speaker you are. And you are booking. <laughs> Tom, you came for a speaker about coming. <laughs> okay. You coming from the Bullers of Bucking Aye. and me coming from the Parish of Slains. What a good speaker you are. <laughs> but mind you, since leaving here, I've been all over the world. I worked in India for 10 years and uh, we've lived down in Dunblane and, you know, the Central Belt and uh, moved uh, jobs all over Britain, really. So uh, I've lost quite a bit of the accent, but I've still, I've still got it. I'm still proud of it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. The the Croon Bay Golf Club currently is is exact, exactly the same as what it was when it first established itself as the Paradise of the North in terms of golf. We have thousands of uh, international overseas visitors who visit us every year. And that is the, it's about keeping the legacy of Truden Bay Golf Club together. And this exhibition that we've got here today is actually just showing how the history of the club, where it's come from over the past 100 years. But it's in, very, very important as the, in terms of community and the golf club, how we take it, keep this legacy running and take this exhibition and try and continue it for the future, for future generations uh, and for future visitors of the community. Yes. Hi. I believe that um, you worked at the laundry here at Cruden Bay. Aye, that's right. Just speak in the Doric, will I? Oh, please, speak in the Doric. <laughs> there you go. Right, Bessie, uh, when did you start work at uh, the hotel? At the laundry? Yes. Uh, when I left the school at 14, that's it's what nearly everybody did. Uh, we, we started at 7 o'clock and finished at six at night. And then on a Saturday, it was seven to 12, I think. Right. Holidays? Oh no, holidays. Just a local holiday, it was at your goat. What sort of pay were you? Well, I'm just trying to think. I think it was about, it was either seven and six a week or 10 bob a week. Did you keep that or did you have to give it to Granny? Oh no, you just handed it over. <laughs> okay. You handed it over. Are your hard earnings, earnings? You had to, you had to hand it over to somebody else. I know. What, what was life like in the laundry at the Great Railway Hotel? Oh, it was good. And nobody came to anybody else, you see, because it was our locals. And then I was the engineers. And my father worked in the summertime there. And uh, he he was one of the ones in the summertime that uh, drove the, what did you call it? Sam car. Aye. Oh, yeah. Aye. Do you remember the tram car? Aye, fine. That's what I'm telling you. They were there. Uh, and there was, Davy Nicholson was another uh, driver and Andy, well, I've forgotten end of his name now. Did you ever have a huddle in the tram in the tram car? No, no, you no, did. no. It was just for the toffs coming off of the train. Did you see any of the toffs coming off the train? Never saw them coming off the train, but I saw them in the golf course, and they used to come down the village. Did you you carried? I carried for the Sir Jeremiah Coleman. <laughs> oh my lord, we have a woman here who has carried caddied for just say that again. Say that again. Oh my god. I, I caddied I caddied for Sir Jeremiah Coleman. What was he like? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Did they, you get they, they called they called him a cat. What does that no, mean? I kind of I I uh, spell that. But on him, it was off. I mean, it was one in nine. One in nine for a 
the golf course, the golf, more than an afternoon. And then after that, they could be a turn. But he was off a greedy and the kind of a cat. Did you meet any other well-to-dos that came to the big railway hotel? Well, I was, I was men that used to come for the cabinet, but I forgot their names now. The cabinet? Mm -hmm. uh, the Baldwin. government mm -hmm. uh, for London. Baldwin, would that have been one of them? Oh, no, no, it's before my time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's from the 1930s. Uh, Did you not tell me that you used to get up when you were a teenager to look through the window to see the dresses? Oh, we did that. That was a big ball up in the hotel. Mm -hmm. And they used to come downstairs, this, uh, this floor and long dresses. And they used to come to the window and give us sweeties and that. That uh, was uh, about September time, just the end of the summer. And how old would you have been then, when you were doing that? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, oh, well, at the end, though, you see, I would have been just at the end of the war. Just at the beginning of the war, ah, sorry. So that was late aye. teens, aye. Eh? Late teens. Yes, aye, aye, aye. aye. Mm -hmm. aye. They were good. They used to come down the village and give sweeties and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But the people who came to the Great Railway Hotel, aye, they used aye. to come due to the village. Oh yes, the mixed with the villagers, and there the... used to be a fancy dress ball in the in the hut in the hall here, and I was dressed up as a fisher wifey, and I got the first prize, and it was a lovely string of no. Amber, would it have been? Mm -hmm. They were orangey yellow. Mm -hmm. They were really lovely. And that was for Lady McClintock. The McClintocks came, Lord and Lady McClintock. Now, I can't imagine the other ones I knew. Right. <coughs> when you lived in Crudenbay, far did you bide? I, I bed in a new block. Robert, you were born one Harbour Street. I was born in Harbour Street, doing it to Harbour there, but my mum and dad moved out. I would have just been a baby, I think. And it was our, in the new block at that time. I was folk lived in the bottom flat and then at the top flat. And we were in the top, and the woman underneath us, she was a little, like, a, she sold stamps and I think. She was an old creator, we called her granny. And then her daughter was the postmistress. And she used to take me up to the castle. When I, you weren't allowed to go unless, you know, you was with somebody that had authority. And she used to take me around the gardens and they were just beautiful. And then I can remember the castle when they were giving it up, the kind of roof and that thing off. And the, all the villagers, well, a lot of the villagers get up and they were selling sticks. You bought a bag of sticks. It was coming for the castle. Oh, nothing there we go, there we go. History in motion. Do you know this is history in motion? It's history in motion. Aye. You are living history. So important that we that we take you, and I'm so delighted that you've come to the hall at Port Erro. I'm Fickrudden Bay, but originally from the parish of Slains. Now you were speaking about you, what you remember about the, the castle, Slains Castle. Aye. Were you ever inside the castle? No, no, no. Just after it was a ruin that you got into. No. What do you think the importance of Slains Castle was to Cruden Bay? Oh, well, according to my mother, uh, uh, Clara Button, uh, these well-known folk used to come to uh, Slane's Castle every year. What was that? When the, when the school came out at uh, four, I think it was four o'clock, 
Uh, the Domini would be wanting a game of golf and he would just used to say, I'll meet you in a buck hole. My brother used to caddy for him. McPherson, his name was, and then it was Macintosh came. Mr. Macintosh, I remember the Domini. You lived just three doors up here. Mm. Ah, yeah, that's right. I was going to ask you, you were speaking about Biden and Port Errol. I now live in Port Errol, Green Street. Oh, uh, aye. What was life like in living in Port Errol? In your, in your younger days? Oh, it was just great. Abdi can't have any else and Abdi can't their business. But they did they can the mid up. <laughs> oh no, Abdi was very neighbourly and friendly. Do you think we've lost a wee bit of that today? Yes, society? I do. I do. Aye. Not such a caring society now, I don't think. I was just thinking, I was just thinking. You know when you were working the laundry, Aye. was it really hot? It must have been steamy. Oh, it was half a hit. Aye, it was half a hit. How did you cope with the temp working in that Well, you just had to put it up, we didn't get anything else. Can I ask you, Aye. when the war came, when the Second World War came, Aye. what difference did that make to the hotel? What happened then? Well, just soldiers, they put soldiers in it. Uh -huh. And they just knocked it to bits with their tackety boots and, you know, their heavy shoes and that. And poor, uh, pulled uh, mirrors off the wall and that sort of thing. And then at the end, I think it was the end of the war, I, I think it was the FMS, and they sent off their stuff, like wash hand basins and that. Five bob. Lovely marble. Hello, Uncle. Here we have some past lady golfers of Cruden Bay. And lo and behold, my goodness, we've got a present. Haven't we, Jill? Right, my name is Jill Harrison. I've lived in Cruden Bay all my life. I have been a member at Cruden Bay Golf Club for 50 odd years. I have been the Cruden Bay Ladies Champion 22 times. My first win was in 1975. Right, here we go, Mrs. Foreman. What is your uh, recollections as a young bairn of the Great Railway Hotel in Cruden Bay? Well, I remember it clearly, and I remember the day that it was blasted down. I stood at the front door, because I lived in Alton Cottages, and I stood at the front door with my parents, and we watched it being blasted and crumbling down. Was it sad to see that? Well, as I say, I was too little to really appreciate what was happening, but I'm sure my folks were quite. It was disappointing for them. I only remember when it was used during the war, and I, I was very familiar with it then. I used to be asked up to parties at, at the, with the soldiers and that, and they had, you got a mug of chocolate, and it was so big, the mug, and my little face was... <laughs> How old were you disappeared? How old were you then? Well, I was born in 41, so I would have been three and four. Uh -huh. And you remember being in the hotel? Yes. And the soldiers? Aye, but it was when the soldiers were there. Mm -hmm. And then I remember the soldiers used to march up and down past, past our house, and I fell off my trike, and two of them came out of the parade and helped to sort my knee and things. <laughs> can remember that. What was it like inside the hotel? You going in as a bairn and the soldiers were there. What was it like, Norma? Well, it was quite bare. It was just barracks by then, you know, for for the soldiers. And then their names carved on the walls and the doors and things. So there was it was no grandeur. It was just purely for, for the... I, I really would have only been probably in the kitchens or where they, where they ate. Oh. No, because it was like, like, they would invite you up and for hot chocolate and things. But it was yeah. functional at that time, Norma. It was functional because there was a war on. Ah, but it wasn't functional as a hotel. No, no. It was just functional as the, as the barracks for the men. It was needed. Uh -huh. it and was there needed. was Norwegians and there was, at one time there was Royal Scots at another time. And it was the Royal Scots that we really got quite involved with. So there was this man who lived in the same row of cottages as me and he walked with a very, very straight back. And I, as a little, little kid, thought 
that he was a very proud, kind of conceited man walking like that. But then my parents explained that that poor man, actually, he was a porter at the hotel and he fell down the lift shaft and that's why he couldn't, he had to walk the way he did. Mr. Croxford. Alan to his friend. Alan, your parents were very much to the fore in Croon Bay. Yes, they were. Uh, my parents arrived in October 1963 uh, from uh, Slough near London. Uh, they'd decided to buy the old shop in Cruden Bay uh, up at Station Road and uh, my mum decided that she would run the shop and my dad would get a job at Cross and Blacklaws in Peterhead and uh, as a youngster of course uh, I'd have been seven and a half at that time uh, went into Port Errol Primary School but having come from a place where they spoke very English uh, to a place where they spoke broad Doric I think for the first three weeks I didn't understand a word that anybody said to me. But uh, as I say, after I got used to what was what, we sort of integrated into village life. Uh, well, the, the shop uh, must have been sort of rebuilt in the either late 20s or 30s. I think originally it had been Simmer's Restaurant from Hatton, just down from the station. But it had a fire either in the 20s or the 30s and then was rebuilt partly as shop, partly as house. And uh, the shop was cut into two. On the right hand side was the general grocer shop, which had old wooden lining boards around the walls and old built-in shelves. And the left hand side was a tea room that my mum ran just to sort of boost the business up. And that, because the shop was never shut from our side of the, House, so so it was open all hours. Yes, it was. Life was like that in them days. It was open indeed. Open all hours. Yeah. Oh. The uh, uh, it's good to think back to the past days of the village. Obviously, as I no longer live locally, I'm up at Inverness these days, but I still keep up with various people that was in the village in my day, and uh, it's nice to come back and reminisce and think of your shared history school days, this building here that we're in was where we had the gym from the Port Errol School uh, and uh, again various teachers that you can reminisce over the years, people that's long since gone. It's just uh, great to, to be reminded of your past. Alan, you've brought here along today a valuation draw from the Parish of Cruden, 1909-1910. I think this is the, the great thing about people coming together in occasions like this, because you've obviously taken something of great importance. Yes. Oh, well, I'm happy to sort of donate a copy of it to the Heritage Group, uh, because it uh, names all the houses down by the harbour up Main Street, and on the other side there's ones further afield, like... Uh, Kennedy buildings out at Play Hillock and uh, some of the surrounding areas tells you who owned them, who occupied them and uh, in some cases uh, houses or businesses were built on land that was owned by the Earl of Earl at the time and of course subsequently they've all been sold on but it's a, a snapshot in time of what life was like in Cruden Bay in 1909-1910. In the picture on the uh... So this is great, the, you know, looking back on the past and these past images of, because some people are no longer here, but it's great that, you know, that they'll be remembered and the sharing of this, That's right. um, Alan, is very important. It is. Connecting people, connecting places. Hello, my name's Colin McClay. Uh, I've been brought up in Cruden Bay all my life. And it's just to say that my granda Roy was the starter down at the golf club at the bottom of the big hotel for many years. And I always remember going up when I was a wee boy and he was always there to start everybody off. And uh, he really enjoyed uh, what he did. And that's all I can remember really. But as I said, with the village before growing up, it was a great place to be 
and everybody knew everybody else. Okay, so here we have Mick Shepherd of Portero. Also. Historian, photographer and writer. You're also a member of the Portero Heritage Group who have um, brought together this display and of uh, past displays of Cruden Bay. Mike, what do you think is the importance of keeping all this history together and gathering the momentum? Well, it's a history of uh, its heritage, you know, it's sort of what, what happened in the past. Because, you know, um, Cruden Bay, I mean, a lot of the old houses are still standing and we're living in houses built by people you know, over a hundred years ago, you know, people that lived in them, people that had uh, working lives here in Cruden Bay. So in that way, we're all connected. Um, but Cruden Bay has been changing over the years. And it's fascinating just finding out, you know, who lived in our houses and what did they do? Even how did they think, you know, and what happened to them? Particularly, uh, it seems to be the case that Cruden Bay has never been a boring place to live in. There's always been something that happened. Well, Mike, I think um, the importance of recording history or looking back at history is so important. Right, Mike, because I know of this gentleman who um, looked at a particular character who came to visit Cruden Bay, probably one of the most famous characters and who had the biggest influence. Um, are, you know, worldwide. Well, you're referring, of course, to Bram Stoker, the author. Draken. I am. Okay. Mm. Well, I'll tell you the story of my involvement with the book. And what I was aware of was that Bram Stoker visited Cruden Bay and that somehow there was a connection with, with Slane's Castle. And that was about it. You know, vague connotations that somehow Dracula was wrapped up in the whole story. In particular, um, it was clear that um, Bram Stoker loved the place. It was a special place, which is why he came back year after year after year. And it was where he, he wrote his books. In fact, before Bram Stoker first visited Cougar Bay, um, that first visit was when he was 45, he'd only written two books and they weren't particularly well known and then after the age of 45 returning to Cruden Bay year after year the books came tumbling out of him it was Cruden Bay that did that um, most notably Dracula which he, he wrote started writing in 1895 and was published in 1897 well, uh, Mike, Mike, who, by the way, is my very great friend and neighbour, who's, let me see the book, Mike, let's see oh. the book, don't be shy, Mike, don't be shy. Right, <laughs> here we go. Right, the importance of thinking about back, and um, especially if you've done, Mike, and bringing out a character who loved Cruden Bay, it spurred you on to think deeply. Your thoughts then, let me see the book again. <laughs> became this, a book. There's not many people, or not many of us, Mike, are able to write a book. You have done this, Mike. You know, from a look of Cruden Bay to be able to write a book, When Brave Men Shudder, about not just Bram Stoker, and um, who's a writer uh, of, of Dracula, but he was a man. He was a man who was very passionate about Cruden Bay. Oh, indeed, yeah. So, thank you, Mike. And we'll hear about more about this book later. Isabel, uh, well, this is Isabel, we're outside the public hall in Portero Public Hall, which was um, opened in 1896. We're now um, in the year 2019. Gosh, a bit of history in between, Mrs. Conan, isn't there? Mrs. Conan, um, can we ask how, how young you are? What's your age? Your age, Mrs. Conan? 91. Ni oh my gosh, 91 years old. So you've been in Cruden Bay for a long time? Yes. Uh -huh. Since I was two. Since you were two. 
a lot of change in Cruden Bay. Yes, very much. What's the biggest change you think, uh, Mrs. Con, in the last oh, how many years? Well, are the different houses going to begin and change in population? Do you, what's the momentous occasions about Cruden Bay that you remember? My cousin drove the Rolls Royce. And our job on a Saturday afternoon was to clean all the Rolls Royce for it, for, ready for night. So, who was he driving the Rolls Royce for? From the. taking the visitors from the hotel, from the station to the hotel. My goodness, that's and amazing. His name was jo Jim Ski. Do you remember the old hotel, Mrs. Gunner? Yes. What was it like? Beautiful. Were you ever inside it? Just inside the door, but my sister delivered telegrams to the hotel. Oh. Mrs. Conan, you what did you do when uh, when you were working in Cruden Bay? What was your job? Behind the counter in the post office. The post office. Mm -hmm. Was that a happy days? It was very good. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Did you work there for long? Well, I left. I left there to get married. And then, hello. And then I worked in the surgery. So we're at the public hall at um, in Port Edel here. Just at the back of me would have been the Al School, Mrs. Connor. Is that where you went to school? Yes. Uh huh. Um, what's your memories of school days at Port Edel? Very good. Who was, enjoyed it. who was a Domney at the time? Mr. McIntosh. He was my Domney, my goodness. Yes. Hi, uh, George. Uh, you remember as a student working at the local brickworks here at Cruden Bay. What was yes. it like? Hey, manual work. It was, you dug out a clay hole, they made three inch, six, six inch pipes and nine inch pipes, and also bricks. Pretty busy. A lot of hard working guys, Sandy Ritchie, who I believe is still living, was, was the immediate boss, and Jimmy Ritchie was the former. Really with it. Good lord, that's amazing because I mean, I can remember, vaguely remember about the brickworks. What did you think when you saw the brickwork factory come in doing? It was sad, but it's a, it's a sign of the times. It was a employer in the area, which is no longer here. Should, here we go. Here, George. <laughs> Goodness me, your great grandfather? No, my grandfather. Right, uh huh, yeah. But... He worked at the brickworks prior to World War II and during World War II. And you... stayed in one of the brickworks houses at Hockler. Up in rem... the brickwork cottages. Do you remember any stories that he told you, George? No, he was dead before I was born. Uh huh, but my goodness, that was amazing. Mm -hmm. So the brickworks had a huge history in its own. Yeah, oh, definitely. And you worked in it as well? Yes, I worked in it as a student for yeah. two years. Yeah. Two yeah, summers. Father, father was there. Was that, what was that, Mrs. Conan? My father worked at the brickworks when it was bombed. Good Lord. Two killed. In the brickworks, there was a bomb dropped. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Gosh, that would have been some impact on the community yeah. then. Okay, cheerio folks. See you at the next exhibition. Bye-bye. We're doing a bit of connecting here. You were saying that your your aunt, aunt yes, she worked was, as a she worked as a nurse at the well, the hotel when it was a hospital. When uh, the hotel, when the Great Northern Railway yes, Hotel was yeah, a hospital. Yeah. And she worked as a nurse. She worked as a nurse. It's amazing. Yeah. I'd say, oh look, he's even getting in the act. Mm. Interested in history, a dog that's interested in the history. That is brilliant. Mm. Oh, dog. Very well. This is a very well kept face of Cruden Bay and Port Edel. 
I believe you spotted something here, Anne. So, Anne, this is you um, finding out your... Granda. Granda. Anne. Oh, I was just thinking, you know, what this grand hotel and the fact that it was demolished and it seems quite... Um, catastrophic but when you think at the time it was um, during the war and the importance was not in saving uh, the hotel but it was on saving the nation and restoring the nation again. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs Matthews of Cruden Bay uh, Hello. Hello. I'm just down to see the, the display of the old castle of Cruden Bay. Uh, I live quite near Cruden Bay, uh, called the, the Nook Hatton. Uh, we've been the Nook for the other great generation, been there since the 1860s. So uh, interesting looking box, George. Here we have George Smart. George, what's in the box? It's a, it's a box that was made from the wreckage of the Wistow Hall in 1912. And it was, it was a wedding present to my grandmother from the chap who made it. Where was the wreck? Was it off Cruden Bay, George? At, at, on the, the rocks at Cruden Bay. It's, it's, uh, I have, a, I have a, a sheet of paper, a photograph of the, all the names of the wrecks and the Worcester Hall is one of the on the left. Hello, Richard, Richard Clark. Your father was the, your, yeah, your father was the butcher. Ah, uh, you're right. Oh, Kinta, well, my goodness, here at Kinta Bay. Uh, Richard, what do you think about the importance of retaining our history? It's good for the village. Um, I think that people who've lived here a long time will see the importance of finding out other heritage. Uh, you really put them on the spot, <laughs> That's what I'm here to do, put people on the um, spot, Richard. Uh, there's so little video footage of the old uh, hotel and even the castle, there's very little. It's good to see. Um, I've seen lots of photographs I've never ever seen before. Um, it's really interesting for a local lad like me. Angelica? Yes? My hello. friend and neighbour in Portero come to visit the exhibition today. What do you think of the exhibition? Absolutely fantastic, you know, uh, it was great to see all the information gathered from the past and the history uh, of this place, which I love so very much. And uh, uh, the wealth of information uh, wasn't able to get through it all, but it was absolutely fantastic to see all the photographs of the old hotel and the tram and the, the station and all, all that made this place all these years ago. Uh, and the people who were there all these years ago and how they how they shaped this place. Uh, now, I've, I've been in Cruden Bay or in Port Arrow. I've lived in Port Arrow since 2000. Uh, no, 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 that's not true. Since 1994 uh, and now it's 2019. So in, even in that time, you know, when I first came here, um, I found it was a, it's a, a beautiful community and, uh, and all the people who lived here before me uh, had made the place into what it was and, uh, and it's a, an amazing place, beautiful place, full of uh, culture and history. Yeah. Okay, so um, there's a lot of the older people who were there when they first came to Port Arrow, they're no longer there. And uh, it's very important to preserve the memory of them and their contribution to this beautiful community and for them, for us to remember what they have brought to the village and how they made the village and how all of us from now on are making history and for you in the future, whoever is going to see this video, 
just to remember all of us who made this place the way it is and maybe you remember us. Right, Mr. Sankster, well, you know what I can say? All I can say is keep on doing what you're doing because you are documenting something that is really important. You know, you've got a passion for it, Alan, haven't you? Uh, yes, I would uh, say probably I, I have. Uh, and uh, I expect I'll, I'll continue doing this uh, as long as, as I'm able and in a state of mind to do so. And that's so important. Yes. Not just for the here and now, but also to remember what's happened in the past, Alan. Yes. And and to, it, yeah, and to project it into the future so that people can grasp knowledge, you know. Uh, well, the, the, the film that, um, that I took uh, in the 1960s um, is on YouTube now to the public uh, domain uh, and a number of uh, commercial uh, railway interest DVD camera, uh, companies uh, have also used a lot of my film in some of the publications, the commercial DVD publications they've done uh, on railways. So um, what I recorded was something that uh, will never be seen again uh, and uh, it's there for posterity. There forever? Yes. It's there for the future. Do you realise, Alan, that in a thousand years' time, two thousand years' time, people will not only be able to see what you've documented, but they'll also be able to see you, Alan. Well, the, the, the digital revolution has made a great uh, change. I, I wish I had it uh, back uh, 50, 60 years ago. Um, what I filmed was all done with a, a clockwork camera uh, and 8mm movie film, which you got four minutes uh, of film for £1.25, shillings, which, which was a lot of money in that days. Uh, on a then real woman's wage of about seven pound ten shillings. Alan, you're to be commended. Okay, keep on doing it, but you're doing best. Thank you, Joe. It's a pleasure.